So the final graphical component uh, that we're talking about for, for BF3 is uh, post-processing. Post-processing is a really important tool for, for a developer, and we have tons of different types of post-processing effects. Many of them are, are stuff that uh, enhance the gameplay or, or sort of indicates what the gameplay is going on. If you have a blurry screen, you're, you're dying a little bit. If it's tinted, you also know that's an effect there. Or if you have some blood on it. Uh, we have other effects like motion blur, which is a sense of speed in the environment, uh, as well as uh, even more important things like tone mapping and bloom, which uh, I talked about earlier, which actually is really part of the lighting and part of the HDR rendering. You, they're, they're must have uh, in that sense. So I'm going to talk a little bit about some of these effects that we have. First, ambient occlusion. Uh, ambient occlusion is the, it's an important visual cue to have objects grounded in the world. So this is a cheap version of ambient occlusion that we've added for Frostbite 2 for people with a little bit lower end uh, graphics cards. Uh, which is a standard SSAO effect, but it's a very, ni uh, very nicely implemented and pretty fast, actually, really fast. And it doesn't cost any extra memory. So we, we use this on the, we actually use this effect, exact effect on the consoles and when running on medium settings. And it looks pretty good. It adds some detail. I'll show a little bit other screenshots later on. Uh, but we also have our HBAO effect, which is uh, called Horizon-based uh, ambient occlusion, which is something that uh, we've been working closely with NVIDIA for quite some, quite some time. Uh, Louis Bavoilet and, and NVIDIA, him and I have been working with this back and forth. We, we had it for BC2, uh, by Company 2 also, but there was a much simpler effect back then, and we had to disable some of the, some of the nice details that that effect could add because, um, because we got too much flickering on our foliage. The, the, because the foliage is so random uh, on, on trees and on, on, mesh, on, on the terrain decoration. So the, this filter, the output of it flickered quite a bit, at least if you had a lot of, uh, um, if, if you had quite a high con contrast on it. So we improved this filter significantly now. So it, it has a much wider and higher contrast. So you see, actually see this ground, these almost ground shadows. And it does some temporal filtering um, uh, over time to reduce flickering in many places on the scene. Uh, so it's a pretty cool effect. And I'll try and show some comparison here. So here's the effect uh, with no AO. So you sort of see under objects and inside objects. That sort of you see light there. It should not be light there. It should be covered by by the objects themselves. So when we add our SSAO effect, we sort of get a little bit of that, a little bit, a little bit help here. It does remove some things. Has a little bit detail. It's kind of difficult to see the full difference though. But then when we add the HBAO, we see a much more significant difference here. It actually uh, does darken everything under the object, so they fit in much more, much, much better in the environment. Here we also have some other. It's a, just a gameplay screenshot from Operation Swordbreaker. I think the single-player level is called. It's a pretty, pretty cool, pretty cool area here. Uh, and this is with just some standard uh, bloom and post, post processing, but n none of these more visible effects that we have here. So here's just a classic uh, motion blur. A pretty good HDR motion blur implementation uh, that. Gives you a sense of speed, of course, when mo moving around the environment. And we found that running the game with a stable frame rate and motion blur, even with keyboard and mouse, I was a, bit, a little bit skeptical about this initially, and it would be interesting to hear what you guys feel also. Um, even playing the game with keyboard and mouse and running with a stable frame rate and motion blur added, it actually gives you the perception that it feels so much smoother. But it's completely optional. You can disable it if you want. And it costs a little bit of performance also to do this, especially as the effect is in is in HDR, so it, and the HDR part is important because it keeps the bright light sources. They become like long lines, long streaks now when it's in the HDR, which is much more cooler effect uh, and much more realistic. So here we have an extreme <laughs> effect, uh, extreme post-processing effect, which is a color grading. This, this, this is just for a, a frame. I was pretty happy, pretty lucky just grabbing this specific screenshot here. Uh, just for a frame when the explosion goes off. Uh, it's not enough that it, uh, the explosion just lights up the environment. It also changes very, very briefly the, the, the color of, of the screen uh, by tinting, uh, tinting everything by, uh, through a 3D volume texture lookup. Um, and we use this color grading for other types of more nuanced uh, approaches also. Uh, and here we have a pretty extreme combination of effects also. This is while running, so there's a little bit of motion blur, and there's a blur on the screen because you're being hit which can be a little bit annoying, but it's also an important part of it. There's some vignette effect. We de desaturate the screen, and we add some strawberry yam on, on the sides. OK, so I've gone through quite a lot of different, of the different systems we have and different types of visual effects and how all of those interact. So here's a sort of a breakdown of our scenes and how, how we end up with this final picture here. Um, so this is, what, this is the goal of the picture. So we start with something like this. Uh, not very impressive, but a very important key detail of having the terrain there. It has a lot of detail on it, but it doesn't look that sexy here, but it has, this is without any lighting at all. So we, this is what, pretty much what we're rendering to the G-buffer in the beginning. So we start with some terrain. 
we add uh, our composite meshes, which are meshes that can be destroyed or be affected. Uh, have, there are multiple parts in them. That's my, they're a composite of multiple meshes, pretty much. So they add all of the man-made buildings here, uh, pretty much. We also have, uh, add our ready meshes, and ready meshes just as pretty much a static mesh that has no parts, which is like the rocks here and some smaller details and smaller props, things like that. Uh, then we add foliage, not that much foliage in this screen, but there, there's some of it. Uh, we also add decals, which is the thing, uh, just, uh, just a couple of decals here on the sides of the, the, the oil cisterns. When we rendered the, those passes before, we actually, as we're running to the G buffer, we were actually running to these four, di four different type of buffers. Uh, so while we were doing that, we actually rendered out these G buffer uh, normals also, as well as the, a specular term and, and a smoothness term for the, for the environment. So we actually rendered, have rendered out all of those things. Uh, and then in the next pass, oh yeah, we actually have a sky visibility term also, I forgot about that one. It contains multiple things. The, the trees are blue here because they have a translucency effect on them, and the rest of the objects are red, because the, the, and the, red is, uh, the intensity of the red is pretty much a, how visible the sky is from, for, for that specific pixel. So we use that for, for, for lighting uh, to affect quite a bit of things. How, how visible the sky, yeah. Uh, and then once that is done, we render out that G-buffer with all the objects. We start with our lighting. So this is uh, rendering out the light for, for the sky and for the bounce light that you saw before, and combining both of them on all of, all of the objects. So you see here, there's no sunlight at all in this scene yet, uh, but you see some bounce from the sun, actually. You see some brighter areas uh, in, in the scene. And you see it's a general blue tint also, because the sky is uh, generally quite blue here. Then we add, a, uh, then we add the sunlight uh, on top of everything, and now you have a, something that looks like a perfect white environment, pretty much, with, <laughs> with just sun and sky and, and bounce lighting. Uh, and then the final lighting stage is to add also a couple of local light sources. I uh, can switch between those. It's just a couple of light sources in this specific scene. Some other scenes are dominated by these light sources, which are typically point lights or spotlights or line lights in, in the environment here. And now once we have done all of this lighting, actually, what we, then we combine the lighting with the G-buffer, the diffuse term and the specular terms and, all, and the other terms you saw here. So we get this, this uh, combined picture. This actually looks like a standard game screenshot, pretty much except it doesn't have any sky, so let's add the sky also. So now we're actually rendering to, in HDR. We've combined all of these buffers, the lighting and the, the colors, and then rendering the sky. So now we're rendering in HDR, we're combining all these uh, terms and just adding more stuff on top of it. So we added the sky, but you sort of see a pretty harsh border between the sky and, where, and the landscape. So we add some atmospheric scattering as well in the scene to make it sort of fit in to get, to get it better. So now we have a scene that, that, yeah, I think it actually fits in pretty well, but the actual um, colors here look, look pretty odd. Um, so, oh yeah, we don't have a sun. So we have the sun and some of the glare effects, uh, which is sort of a part of the visual style uh, of BF3. And then the bloom that I talked about, it's not super apparent in the screen, but we, we add it in the end here always. Uh, that also has a little bit of a tint, and it also smooths out some of the hard edges that we have in the, in, have in the environment, uh, at least when there's strong light sources uh, behind there. And then the final step is our color grading, which is a specific artistic choice on this level uh, that artists have done, that they wanted to have a, a cold feeling, because you're quite, you're quite high up. This is the level where you base jump. You base jump down to this direction, but you're still up in the mountain, so it's cold. And so they, they desaturated the picture a bit and emphasized uh, the blue colors more. So that's sort of, now you know sort of how we build up the entire frame of, uh, uh, of, uh, of, frame of BF3.